thing. And you and I, I kind of teased this last week and I was talking about what we're going to talk about this week. It's Hulk Hogan. He was last seen in WWF in June of 93, Arn, losing the title to Yokozuna at the King of the Ring pay-per-view. And the big, the rumors are swirling now about him coming to WCW rather than returning to uh, the WWF. Arn, Hulkamania officially begins January 23rd, 1984. As this episode drops on the 13th, we are about a week and a half away from the 40-year anniversary of when Hulk Hogan defeated the Iron Sheik. Isn't that crazy to think about? 40 years ago, 40-year anniversary. Wow. Yep. It's, got, it's got to make you feel old. It does, because I was, well, how old was I? I was six, six years old, five going on six, what, 80, January 84? Yeah. I mean, come on now, 40 years ago. Well, it, it's mind-boggling if you, okay, look at he beat the Sheik in record time, right? Yeah, Madison Square Garden wins the belt. Hulkamania is born. The next nine years, it's Hogan and WWF. Think I mean, of, the, yeah. think, of, think of how the business became Hulk Hogan, lunchboxes, ice creams, cartoons, merch, merchandise, cartoons, you name it how it morphed to where it is now and everything in between. That was real Vince. I mean, and then honestly it was Vince 1984 is such a big year in wrestling. Uh, I was just telling Kevin Sullivan the other day, I watched a, a documentary, a third party documentary done by cultaholic. It's fantastic. And it's going through the early years all the way through. They did a whole series. It's amazing. But 1984, I sat there and watched and I thought, what a transitional year Vince buying the company and then how he took on the territories and started growing his business. And it came with Hawk and then Talon he brought in and Okerlund and Piper and really grew. And then it just went from there. Everything just continued to explode. And now here we sit, you have AEW, WWE, two nights of WrestleMania, pay-per-views galore, international. It's exploded. Isn't that something? Just the growth, and it really all started back in that early '80s time frame when territories, when when Vince had the vision, and and it changed the whole. It changed everything. You know, and I was sitting there for that year, 1984. I was living in Pensacola on the beach. I had met Aaron. I was having the time of my life. But we would watch that show, and we would go, "Holy smokes! What a what a spectacle!" And when it really became something concrete that I could put, I mean, cause we're watching it just like wrestling fans, you know, we were living down in Pensacola. We would watch the show and uh, it's like, okay. You know, I see all the, you know, how everything is morphing and how it's getting more exciting and it's bigger and the, all the, uh, the quality, I guess you would just call it, um, you know, the video packages, just, just everything. Production, was, a, production yeah. was at a different level. I mean, it was like when it became real for me is when uh, the Tonga kid who was at that time was down in, in wrestling, Jerry Stubbs and myself with Scott Armstrong and Tommy or Johnny Rich. They were the Rat Pack, and we were wrestling those guys, and he got the call to go to New York, and I've told the story on this show and probably every other show. After he got the call and he went to New York, a couple of weeks went by, and it was either off or Sika, no disrespect, but it came down to the building and uh, in Pensacola, came in the locker room, asked if he could see me in the bathroom. That You knew what that meant, right? Uh, so I was fixing to get killed pretty no. much. Sheesh. I mean, in those days, if somebody said, I need to see you in the bathroom, you're better go in there swinging because you're, yeah, you're in your ass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody has planned this and here we go. And he called me and he said, the kid called from, from New York. He's been up there a couple of weeks. I just wanted to thank you. He said, you're one of the guys, you know, responsible for helping him so much. He made $3,000 last week. His weekly check at that time, 
and the position with Continental would have been worth about 500. Oh, man. That's when it became real to me. It was a concrete number. And he's only been up there a couple of weeks. It's not like, I mean, he's first match. That's first match money My in God. those days, you know, opening match money. That's game changing money. <laughs> That's when it became real to me. I went, holy shit, maybe we better look at this in a, you know, a different way. What does it take to get up there and all this? <clears throat> it, it was a boom period. They talk about Dick Ebersol coming in and helping change the production Saturday night's main event. All this, all the things that started to happen so quickly. And I talk about that because, you know, it, his run comes to an end largely at WrestleMania eight. When he went back to Hollywood, Vince turned to flair, Bret Hart, Yokozuna to carry the title. And let's not forget at this time, the federal government, by the way, charges McMahon with the distribution of steroids. So he's fighting for his company as well as freedom. 